Oh, hey, welcome to Flynn Bog Woodwork. This is Brian. Turns out hardwood is flammable. Who would have thought? Now I've made a lot of dumb mistakes in my early woodworking career, and I'm here to share some of those mistakes with you. So let's take a look at seven items I bought early in my woodworking career that I wish I would have bought something else. So let's take a look at it today, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Do you like being pissed off? I know I don't. But if you do like to be pissed off, I suggest you get band clamps like these. Now when I first started woodworking, these were two items that I knew I had to have. These would help me out when I'm putting together any sort of box. The premise behind these wood clamps is you simply encompass your workpiece by putting these 90 degree angles on each corner of your box and create a nice secure bond. But that just doesn't happen as easily as it sounds. Let me show you what I mean. So the first thing is I've got four pieces of plywood here. I'm going to place them in a box and I'm going to surround it with these clamps. Now there's the first problem. I knocked over a piece already. This is a reoccurring problem you have with these clamps. Now the idea is that you secure your piece by putting each one of these 90 degree angles on each corner of your box. Once you have it aligned, you simply tighten your rope, and there's another problem. The ropes slip consistently. <clears throat> so I'll try to tighten this up, and as you can see, these corners are slipping. And once I get it fairly tight, I'll lock down the clamp. Once it's locked down, I'll slowly tighten this up. Now supposedly you only need one of these clamps to create your box. I've got this all lined. And now I'm just going to test for square. Now you can see from this picture here that it is fairly square. However, this item is not very secure. It doesn't take much force to fold down any side and all of a sudden you have to restart the process. So another issue with this is you can see it's not very firm. The last thing I found is that you need at least two of these clamps to create a nice secure 90 degree angle at each corner. So what is my suggestion as a better alternative for these band clamps? Well, it's these 90 degree corner clamps. Now these are red, but they're not woodpeckers. These are simply a cheap Amazon brand, but they work just as fine. The nice thing about these is you place them in the corner and you know it's at 90 degrees and then you place the corner clamp lock on each side of the workpiece. Once you have it in line, you simply tighten it down by screwing this knob. Now that this workpiece has a secure bond to this corner clamp, I'm going to secure the other piece. In the same fashion, I simply put the clamp on and tighten it until it's nice and secure. Now that I have both clamps tightened, you can see it's very secure and you can shake it around and it's not going anywhere. Lastly, I'll test for square and you can see from this image, it's perfectly square. Another nice thing about these corner clamps is you can do it in pieces. So if I just wanted to put these two pieces together, I could do that and then move on to attach the next piece. And the thing I like about this so much is it doesn't require you to put the whole thing together at once. Now, when you're trying to put all four corners together, it can slip and slide and you may not get the results you want. But with this, you can slowly build your box by adding one corner at a time. And here you go. These clamps are so secure, I can even drop this and it keeps its form. Now every woodworker needs sawhorses, right? Well, that's what I thought too, until I found an easier solution. So let's first take a look at the sawhorse. Now a couple items with a sawhorse is if you're trying to cut through a board like this, what happens when you cut right through the center? Well, I can tell you what will happen. It's going to fall right down the middle and you're going to have two pieces and it's going to form a V right down the center. Or let's say you just need to cut a small piece of wood like this. Let's see what happens with this. Now I was able to cut through that wood fairly easily, but the problem is it left a huge scar in the wood beneath. Now, if this was a piece of wood that I had an intent on using in the future, I can't use it now because it has a deep gouge down the center. 
So how do we create cross cuts like this by using a handsaw and not have it mar up your workbench or have it fall directly underneath you because the saw horses aren't providing support? Well, let me show you. So here's your answer. It's two inch foam insulation. This creates a nice stable support for your workpiece. And if you cut into it, it's no big deal. It's just styrofoam. So let's cut through this piece of wood and I'll show you how it works. Now I'm purposely gonna cut deeper than the wood is thick. So we're gonna see how it cuts into the styrofoam. Now, as you can see, it cut about a quarter of an inch into the styrofoam. It didn't hurt our blade and the piece was supported while we made the cut. Now, most beginning woodworkers, when they first start out, they have a job site table saw or a job site miter saw. And these are great. This is what I started off on and I still occasionally use these. I use my table saw to make things like box joints. I actually have a dado blade in there right now. And I use my miter saw over there for when I have something that I want to cut through, but I don't want to use my expensive Festool Capex. So the one thing when having these tools as a beginning woodworker, you'll notice that the dust collection can become an issue. Most of these saws have a two and a half inch port for your dust collection. Now smaller saws like this, they don't require a big dust collector like the one I'm going to show you right now. So this is the dust collection that I have now, and I do not recommend one of these for a beginning woodworker. This has a four inch port on it, which won't even connect to your table saw and your miter saw if you're working with a two and a half inch port. You can buy adapters, but that tends to not work very well. So let me show you exactly what I recommend for the beginning woodworker when dealing with dust collection. So it may seem pretty obvious, but the normal shop vac is exactly what the beginning woodworker needs. Now most of these come with tubing that will fit directly into your table saw or your miter saw. The problem with these is you have to flip the switch on to start your dust collection, move on to your cuts, and then turn them off by flipping the switch once again. But there's an awesome little tool that fixes this problem and let me show you what it is. So this is the tool right here. This is a vac switch box. Now let me tell you what makes this tool awesome. First off, it's got a plug-in for your vacuum cleaner. Secondly, it's got a plug-in for your tool. And thirdly, it's got an auxiliary plug-in for any other tool that you may need to plug in while you're working with your table saw or miter saw. Now this vac box comes with two plug-ins, so you need to find an outlet that has two spaces available. Let's hook this up to the table saw and I'll show you how it works. So here I have my table saw hooked up to the vac box. I've got my table saw plugged into the tool power. I've got my vacuum plugged into the vacuum power. Now the nice thing about this is when I turn on my table saw, it will automatically turn on the vacuum. Now I don't know if you heard that, but my vacuum cleaner stayed on for about five to seven seconds after I turned off my table saw. This allows your vacuum cleaner to clean up any remaining debris that may have fallen off your table saw after you turn the power off. And that is awesome. Next up on my list of things that I bought early in my woodworking career that I never use anymore is this two-in-one router depth and saw gauge. Now this has got little steps all along the edge here that tell you the depth of where you're at. So it goes from one eighth of an inch all the way up to two inches. So the intent of this is that you set this on your table and you can adjust your router height by turning the crank and adjusting up and down. Now there's a couple problems with this. First off, I don't want my router bit to be touching metal and this is made from aluminum. So I don't want to create any situation where I actually may dull my bit. Secondly, if you're getting into these really small increments, like the eighth of an inch, there's nowhere to rest your actual depth gauge on the table. So if I lower this to one eighth of an inch, I can't even reference my table with this gauge because of the hole from the router bit. Now what I should have bought and what I eventually bought is actually a nice set of calipers. Now most beginning woodworkers know that calipers will tell you how thick something is by placing it in between the two claws of the clamp. But there's another feature of calipers that I think most beginning woodworkers don't know. And that's simply that there's a depth gauge at the very end. As you open the claws, you'll see that this little tab will start to stick out and tell you what the depth is from the tip of this piece right here to the end of your rule. 
So let's take this and look at our router bit. So by referencing the end of the ruler, which is made of plastic, I can push down and touch the table and I can see that I'm right at one eighth of an inch. So for the beginning woodworker, I would recommend getting a set of calipers and you'll have no need for a depth gauge whatsoever. Now when you're a beginning woodworker, you need rasps, right? Because you're gonna be digging into corners and tearing out some areas that you need to make just a little bit smoother. Well, I thought the same thing. Early in my woodworking career, I purchased this really nice set of rasps from Rockler. And as you can see, there's no sawdust on this. So that tells me I'm not using it. Now the main reason I purchased these rasps was so that I could create some round edges on some certain areas that I needed to get into that were really too tight for anything else. But the problem is, first off, I don't do that that often. I don't get into corners with rounded edges. And frankly, if I'm going to be doing that, I use a router. But if I do need to sand something that's got a rounded edge on an interior space, there's an easy solution for that. And that's dowels and sandpaper. All you have to do is take a little tape, wrap your sandpaper around your dowel, and you can get into those tight little edges easily. You can create any size diameter that you want just by picking the right size diameter dowel. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite subject and that's dust collection connection. Now when you're connecting tubing to your dust collector, there's a variety of different connectors you can use. Now what I started off with were these standard connectors where you tighten them up with a screwdriver. These are quite tedious and they take a long time to get tight. After that, I ended up getting into some of these quick clamps. These are a little bit better. They actually clamp right onto the plastic and create a fairly secure connection to your hose. But there's a dust collection connector that's far beyond any other dust collection connection that you've got to see. Let's take a look. So that solution is right here. This is called a Magport, and this thing is amazing. This has single-handedly changed how I hook up my shop to my dust collection more than anything in the workshop. So let me show you how this works. So one thing you have to do is you do have to attach one of these Magports to each one of your tools that you would like to be able to connect to your dust collection. For me, I just use these quick clamps and I attach them very easily. Now that we have this planer attached with a Magport, I'll show you what's on the other end. So this is the hose that's connected to my actual dust collection system. So as you can see here, I've also attached a mag port to this tubing as well. The nice thing about this is you simply snap it on and it's completely connected and it won't break away with any reasonable force. I'll show you what I've got connected to this mag port system. So as we showed, I've got my planer attached to a mag port. I also have my jointer attached. I've got my bandsaw attached. And last but not least, I have my table saw attached. So as you can see, this allows me to have one dust collector that can easily attach to several different tools in a very quick manner. So as you can see from my dust collector, it takes bags, and these things can fill up really quickly. Every time one would fill up, I'd go to Amazon.com and purchase a new bag. You can see from this here, I've got a lot of these left over. I probably have 10 of these. So even though I only have a few of these bags left, I'm here to tell you that these bags are gonna last me well over a year. Let me show you why. So this bag right here is getting a little full. Now what they don't tell you about these bags is these things are reusable. I didn't put this together until after I got tired of replacing these bags and realizing I was throwing away a perfectly good bag that was just like the one I had just purchased. All I do is I unhook the bag and take it to my fire pit and dump it. and all of a sudden I've got a brand new bag. Then I simply reattach my old bag. And I'm back in business. 
But one thing I have ran into is after reusing these bags, sometimes I'll get a little hole in them. And that's an easy fix. Just a little duct tape, put it on the hole, and it's as good as new. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching these seven do not buys. We'll see you again next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know I enjoyed making it. Hopefully you won't make the same mistakes I did and buy these things that I don't recommend. If you get a chance, I'd love to get your subscription and leave a like. And if you don't mind, hit that notification bell so you can be informed of future videos. Thanks again and take care as always.